Of course, while we all wish the storm brought only such stories of heroics and humanity, unfortunately, when catastrophe strikes, it also brings out bad actors, like the convenience store in Houston that CNN found charging $20 for a gallon of gas, $8.50 for a bottle of water, and $99 for a case of water. As of Friday afternoon, Reuters reporting almost 2,000 complaints of price gouging and fraud. Joining me now, the person in charge of pursuing such behavior, the Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. Attorney General Paxton, where does free market economy end and price gouging begin? How do you know it when you see it? Well, first of all, let me just uh, thank you for your opening monologue. That was. Uh right on point and, and, and really captures the spirit of, of Texas and, and all these volunteers thank that you. not only put their boats out but risk their lives for, for other people. So thank you for that monologue. It was excellent. Um, I would say, you know, we don't have a market. We haven't had a market in Houston over the last week. And so the legislature in those certain situations when we're dealing with uh, commodities or, 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 or things that are, that, are necess that are necessities to people, during a crisis, you can't overcharge. And so those are the things we're looking at, whether it's water, fuel, food, hotels, those are the types of things that we're looking at. When people are starting to overcharge, that's where we come in. And have the, the reports been pronounced in any one area? I, I've heard of the gas. I've heard of the water. I know we've got images of people, you know, lined up waiting for gas, so it's an easily exploited situation. We're showing cases of water there on sale for, you know, $42 and, and change. Where are most of the complaints coming? So interesting, at first they were coming, obviously, from the Houston area. It was, a, it was water, it was fuel, it was hotels. We have, you know, many instances of hotels tripling and quadrupling their, their charges. Those have, for the most part, died down. It, we've gotten most complaints now in Dallas about, about gas. I'm expecting now that people realize that there is no shortage in Texas of, uh, of supply, that that is going to diminish as well. But over the last couple of days, we've gotten almost 1,000 complaints on, in Dallas. And General, what's the worst of the reports you've heard? How high have people been charged or attempted to been charged for a gallon of gas? Well, I think you hit it. It's uh, twenty dollars a gallon. We've seen other instances between four and ten dollars a gallon. Obviously, price gouging. Those are those are perfect examples. And by the way, I want to say we're not talking about normal market fluctuations. You know, we've seen the price of gas go up a little bit, and and that's normal. That happens every day in Texas. Happens every day in America. So we're not talking about normal market fluctuations. We're talking about clear price gouging. Those are that's what we're interested in. So how important that you prosecute someone and do it sooner rather than later so as to send a message that this isn't going to be tolerated? Oh, believe me, we've, we've already, uh, I've already had my law enforcement guys out uh, issuing what are called CIDs, Consumer Investigative Demands, to start investigating some of these. So they, they were out immediately. Now, some of them we couldn't get to because the businesses were shut down. Obviously, not, they're inaccessible to, to all of us, so we've actually sent some of those through the mail. We already had, I, I mentioned this earlier, uh, Best Western, that, that uh, a guy that had overcharged by about three or four times, they've already pulled his franchise. And so we've had an impact uh, talking to some major corporations where they have just individual isolated incidences where they've found it and they've corrected it. Best Buy, Home Depot, others have, have stepped up to the plate and, and fixed small problems that, that we've seen. So this is the consumer side of it that we've been discussing. Now I worry about the fundraising side. What concerns do you have as to scammers who might be out there and trying to take advantage of the situation? You know what? We have a lot of concerns. Uh, my office oversees charity and charities in the state anyway, so we have a particular expertise in dealing with this. So yeah, we're very concerned about people donating to causes that are illegitimate or that are, that are made up and, and, and charities you know, suddenly being created. So I would really encourage people to focus on charities that they know about, that, that are legit, that we know are on the ground uh, working like the Red Cross or Samaritan's Purse or the Salvation Army, something like that, that you're confident is a real charity. Hey, let's go back to good news. Talk to me about what you as a Texan saw this week that stands out in your mind that you want to salute. You know what? I think a couple of things. One is just the coordination with our with our local officials, with uh, Governor Abbott, and, and what a great job they did. They were they were ready for this, and, and despite this being something that really you can't get ready for, you know, this is the largest storm I think we've ever had in the history of Texas. It lasted longer. It had more devastation, and yet you saw Democrats, Republicans, no matter what level of government, 
they were working together along with the uh, federal government. And so I'm grateful for how well they, because I think it saved a lot of lives. And then what you were talking about in your monologue is really, it's priceless. People jumping in and volunteering and risking their lives to save other people and not thinking twice about it. So it, it I, you know, it's really hard to describe my feelings toward these people that, that took their time and they could have left the scene instead. They were in the middle of the scene risking their lives. Yeah, I feel it from afar, and I, I salute those whose actions you're referencing, General. The, the question is, how do we make it last? You know, how do we remember this silver lining from a catastrophic situation and put aside those partisan differences going forward? You get the final word on that. You know, there, there's always going to be challenges and differences of opinion, but what I really do hope that people will remember is this fundamental sort of togetherness, this, this idea that we're all Texans, we're all Americans, that ultimately we live in the same country, we live in the same state, and that ultimately we're a lot more alike than we are dissimilar. And so it's so easy to focus on differences, but hopefully going through something so difficult is something that will draw us together as Texans and as Americans so that we can work on our differences and, and, not, and not criticize each other so harshly, rather know that we have our differences, but we still have this basic love for each other.